Several years ago at my home church, Redeemer, here in Monroe, Michigan, we one time preached through the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, chronologically, that is in their temporal or time period uh, order. This preaching through the four Gospels took seven years. Then we preached through the Pauline epistles, slowly, first and second Peter, the book of James, the book of Hebrews, and for over a year, we preached verse by, by verse through the book of Revelation. So verse by verse, that's how we were going, bit by bit, brick by brick, we were, we were laying a foundation for our people, building a Jesus literate house to live and move in. Now, when I was doing this preaching and some others were uh, assisting me, I always expected God to do something, that it wouldn't be just words, because we know that the kingdom of God is, uh, is not a matter of talk, but of power. So expecting God to do something uh, on those mornings that we gathered. Now, it wasn't always that way for me. I, I wasn't taught that, I don't think, I don't remember. I didn't have that sense of expectancy that the pre in the preaching, God would perform things and do things and act in the midst differently even than I would have ever thought or imagined. Um, but now, in, in including this coming Sunday, I fully expect as the word is preached, it's going to be accompanied by the authority and power of Jesus and that there, and that there will be demonstrations of his love and power. Proclaim and demonstrate. Like show and tell or tell and show. If Jesus had a method, I think that's what it was. Pro he proclaimed and then he demonstrated uh, in, in acts of power. His words had authority. In fact, his words uh, were, were part of that demonstration. Um, a long time ago, when I was uh, doing my uh, doctoral work on metaphor theory at Northwestern University, um, one of the books that had influenced me was by a philosopher, a British philosopher named J.L. Austin. The book was called How to Do Things with Words. And in my book, Leading the Presence Driven Church, I have a chapter that incorporates Austin's ideas and the power of words and the words that we speak. Now, Austin, in his investigation, inv investigations of what are called speech acts, the act of, spe of speaking, Austin identified uh, three phases in a speech act. The first phase was called locution, locution, just the saying of the words. The next, uh, component, the next level was called illocution. And illocution is, is what was done, what the words did. For example, in a wedding, uh, when I say to the couple, I now pronounce you husband and wife, that is an illocutionary act. It, it, now they are husband and wife as a result of the words that were pronounced. And then for Austin, perlocution is what happened as a result of those words being spoken. Now, I know that maybe sound a little academic for you, but I want you to know that Jesus' words had authority and illocutionary power. See, all this relates to the authority and power of Jesus' words and his actions as he, as he told and he showed, as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and demonstrated the power of the kingdom in the people's midst. That's the expectation that that I have because, uh, I mean, I've seen it happen many, many times. And as I read the gospels, I see Jesus doing this. And I'm told in John chapter 14 that I will, I will do the things 
that Jesus himself did. And, and it goes for you as well. The great New Testament scholar Richard Baucom writes this, Jesus saw the kingdom arriving in the sorts of things he was doing. He was bringing God's healing and forgiveness into the lives of people he met, reaching out to those who were pushed to the margins of God's people, gathering a community in which service would replace status. And then New Testament scholar George Ladd writes this, Jesus' ministry and announcement of the good news of the kingdom were characterized by healing and most notably by the casting out of demons. Jesus proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and Jesus demonstrated the good news of the kingdom of God by delivering men from the bondage of Satan. As you approach and look ahead at this uh, Christmas season and even Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, think of the power of Jesus that was demonstrated, that fulfilled and enacted the authoritative words he was proclaiming. 